is Adam Cole lying about his recent ankle injury, but first a top AEW star is pushing for the signing of a free agent. Sammy Callahan would recently take to social media to confirm his impending free agency, with the former Impact World Champion confirming reports that he's set to leave Impact Wrestling, with him adding that he will be free as of September 30, 2023. Fightful Select, who would report on the expiring contract prior to Callahan confirming the news himself, would once again provide an update on the Death Machine's future, with him potentially set to join All Elite Wrestling, and the report notes. Callahan has people pushing for him within All Elite Wrestling, namely John Moxley, who has long maintained a great relationship with Callahan. We've heard Sammy's name tossed around in producer roles for other companies as well, as he's met success running Pro Wrestling Revolver as well. It should be noted that Callahan is said to be still on good terms with Impact Wrestling despite them parting ways. As for the John Moxley link, he would team up with Callahan as part of the Switchblade Conspiracy tag team from 2009 till 2011 when Mox signed for WWE. They would more recently reunite for Callahan's own promotion, Pro Wrestling Revolver, defeating both the American Wolves as well as the Unit in July and August 2022 respectively. Sammy himself has poured fuel on the AEW rumor fire as of late when he took to X just a few days ago to post an old photo of he and John Moxley from back in the day, a sign that the Switchblades could soon be all elite. And next, new champions have been crowned in WWE. Last night, WWE would hold the latest NXT Premium Live event, No Mercy, live from Bakersfield, California, in a rare venture outside the WWE Performance Center. The show would feature a total of seven matches across both the main card and the pre-show, three of which we're going to discuss in today's video. The first match of significance would occur early in the night, when main roster superstar Dominic Mysterio defended his NXT North America American title against Trick Williams, who would replace Mustafa Ali in the bout following his recent release. It was the challenger who emerged victorious in a match that saw Dragon Lee as the special guest referee, as during a crucial moment when another referee was incapacitated, Williams dodged an attack from Dominic and countered with a knee strike, leading to his win. The victory marks Williams' first championship win since joining WWE in 2021. Elsewhere at No Mercy, Ilya Dragunov would secure a major win, picking up the NXT Championship after defeating Carmelo Hayes in the semi-main event. After the fact, Dragunov and Hayes displayed some sportsmanship, with Ilya assisting Carmelo to his feet, with both sharing a handshake in a sign of respect. Hayes has held the NXT Championship for approximately six months since winning it from Bron Breaker in April, with him ultimately falling short in his second defense against Dragunov. In the show's main event, Becky Lynch would put her NXT women's title on the line against Tiffany Stratton in an Extreme Rules match that not only saw the use of barbed wire, but also broken Barbie dolls. In the end, the champion was successful after the challenger missed a moonsault that Lynch capitalized on with a manhandle slam. This was Lynch's second title defense since winning the championship from Stratton on September 12, and is now scheduled to defend against Tegan Knox on the October 2nd episode of WWE Raw, with the next challenger having observed the match from ringside. And next, a former AEW star is edging closer to their NXT debut. On this week's episode of NXT, a vignette would show a mystery man viewing clips of the Cincinnati Bengals NFL team, as well as old footage of WCW Saturday Night, with all signs pointing towards the debut of the recent WWE signing Brian Pillman Jr., with these all being clear references to his late father Brian Pillman. This theory gained traction during NXT No Mercy last night, when an extended version of the video was shown, with the previously mentioned clips being seen, as well as additional footage of several WWE superstars. Notably, the superstars featured, such as Charlotte Flair, Dominic Mysterio, The Bloodline, Von Wagner, all have a family lineage in wrestling, just like Pillman Jr. The video concluded with a close-up of the television screen reflecting the lower half of what appears to be Pillman's face. 
Next up, Tony Khan has doubled down on claims of a new era for AEW. Tonight, All Elite Wrestling will host their first Wrestle Dream event from Seattle, Washington, a show that will be held in honor of the late great Antonio Inoki, who is famously the founder of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Speaking with Justin Barrasso of Sports Illustrated ahead of the event, AEW president Tony Khan would make further claims that tonight will see AEW enter a brand new era, continuing to tease something big will happen on the show when he would say when Antonio Inoki passed away, the wrestling world lost a king. Mr. Inoki built a legacy and created a kingdom that has touched us all. In doing so, he inspired so many of us to dream up our own visions for what pro wrestling can be. I'm one of the countless dreamers that Mr. Inoki influenced in his remarkable lifetime. Since he passed away exactly one year ago today, I've worked to create an event for fans around the world to celebrate his creations and the fighting spirit that he will forever embody. Tonight in Seattle, Will proudly honor Mr. Anoki. The greatest champions and rivalries in the sport will take center stage, and a new era in AEW will begin at Wrestle Dream. Speculation has run rampant over what Khan is referring to, with it perhaps being linked to the announcement of a brand new streaming deal for Max, maybe with New Japan in the mix, or maybe even something like the AEW debut of Edge, although I don't see how that's linked to Inoki, with some even feeling that he might have purchased NJPW. But what do you think Tony Khan has up his sleeve tonight on AEW Wrestle Dream? Let me know in the comments down below. And next up, MJF has addressed the Real World Championship that was held by CM Punk. Prior to the AEW exit of CM Punk, he would carry around a defaced AEW World Championship belt that was called the Real World Championship, this due to him never losing the official title when he was forced to vacate thanks to suspension and injury. Speaking with Ibu of Wrestle Purist ahead of tonight's Wrestle Dream pay-per-view, AEW World Champion MJF would be asked about his thoughts on Punk's belt, with him revealing that it was an angle that made all the sense in the world, and Max would know it's I never commented on it, I'll tell you why. I am not exactly a company man. I almost got our company thrown off of Turner after I called Tony Khan a f mark. So I won't sit here and tell you I'm a company man. I'm definitely pro professional wrestlers. The fact of the matter is that Collision is really important. Collision's success is super important. So at the time, having a guy of that stature, having something that everybody in that show could be fighting for, because realistically, as much as Tony Khan wishes, he can clone MJF. I can't be everywhere at once. I didn't have an issue with it, so I thought it made all the sense in the world. Yeah, so to me, I wasn't sweating it frankly. After naming Brian Danielson, Samoa Joe, and CM Punk as the most important figures in the history of Ring of Honor, the world champion would discuss his past rivalry with the Second City Saints, stating that it's a story that will stand the test of time, and Max would add, to me, it wasn't business, it was life. I know it was life to fill too, and I think that's why that rivalry is going to go down as one of the best of all time, and I'm proud of it. Am I proud of some of the sh that I did during that time period? I don't know. I kind of got pushed to the edge, so I'm not going to just f sit here and tell you that I didn't mean anything I did, because I did. I've grown a lot since then, both as a professional wrestler and a person. I think when I'm an old man and god f***ing willing, I find a woman to put up with my bullshit that will let me impregnate them, and I'm sitting there with my kids, I can be like, hey, check out this dog collar match, check out this moment here, because I feel that's a rivalry that will stand the test of time. Next up, MJF has given his thoughts on recent comparisons to the Bloodline. Elsewhere in the interview with Ibu of Wrestle Purist, MJF would be asked about the recent comparisons made between his ongoing storyline with Adam Cole and that of the Bloodline in WWE, both being stories that have more layers than the typical wrestling angle. Max feels that the comparisons between the two come from the fact that they make the viewer feel something, rather than them being similar content-wise, and he would say, oh man, I don't think it's similar at all. I'll tell you what it is. Again, this goes back to an issue that was inside of my sports. It was a while until we had something that made us feel something, and the bloodline made us feel something. Before the bloodline, it was just like, I'm tuning into WWE, there's sh going on, I guess. It was just very scattered. It was just scattered, that's the only way I can describe it. Then bloodline came along, and it made you feel. And now here's MJF and Adam Cole, and oh my god, I'm feeling something right now. I intensely care about this. That reminds me of the feeling I have when I watch The Bloodline. Maybe it's the same thing, which is insane, right? Like if I watch a Saw movie and I love it, and then the next day I sit down and watch 
in Good Will Hunting, those movies both get me excited. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that they're doing the same thing. And next is Adam Cole lying about his recent ankle injury. Speaking of Adam Cole and MJF, one week ago on AEW Dynamite, Adam would suffer from a seemingly legitimate ankle injury when jumping from the stage to the ringside area in order to support his best friend, MJF, who was in the midst of an AEW World Championship defense against Samoa Joe. On this week's episode, Adam would claim that he was entering surgery in the near future and will be out of action for some time, which also lines up with a report from Fightful Select this week that revealed the belief amongst those backstage is that the injury is real and not a work, and if it is, not many people are in on it. Last night on AEW Collision, Cole and Max's upcoming ROH Tag Team title challenges, The Righteous, would address the crowd, with Vincent making a very interesting claim during his promo. Whilst the full context wasn't given, he would call Adam Cole a liar and said, Dutch, look at all the paper people strung together. It's the same paper people who believe that MJF truly is the devil. Well, you know something? He is the devil. The devil pulls the strings that makes us dance. The same strings, man, that are tied to that liar, Adam Cole. Many have pointed out that this could be a clue or suggestion that Adam is in fact feigning injury or lying, or perhaps is playing it up to be more than it is, with the ultimate goal of tricking MJF. One of the prime suspects of the recent attack on Jay White is of course Cole for reasons we discussed in a recent video, so perhaps he is the one under the devil mask to close AEW Dynamite, leaving an open path for himself to face the AEW World Champion in the near future. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. And before you go, make sure you check out what's next for the WWE releases of September 2023.